if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, there is a high likelihood you know a plethora of different ways of playing the game. Of course, you have things like the actual physical card game, but there are a myriad of different simulators that allow you to play the game without actually owning most of the cards. Going from all the way back in the day of Dueling Network, which was the predecessor to Dueling Book, you have the very early iterations of EDO Pro, to the more modern variants of things like Yu-Gi-Oh! Omega and Master Duel taking the world by... storm? Question mark? Regardless of that, though, stuck in between all of these, there is a hidden gem of software that was developed back in 2010. Dual Monsters Genesis. What this was, was essentially an open-world Yu-Gi-Oh! simulator, taking a lot of inspiration from the anime, and building an entire world for you to explore while dueling your friends, your foes, and possibly everything in between. I feel like a lot of the charm of Yu-Gi-Oh! has been sucked out these days because we move more and more towards machine-based play. Omega, Master Duel, EDO Pro, hell, even Dueling Nexus all feature automatic simulators that take away from the experience of playing a card game. So I thought, for a single day, I wanted to return to something that I spent countless hours on back in the day, probably rivaling the amount of time I've spent creating videos in the first place. I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! because of Duel Monsters Genesis. This is going to be a painful one, but if you'd like to see more retrospective videos like this, do remember to click the subscribe button and like button because the algorithm has been shitting on me since I came back and we may as well get that shit going, right? Okay, let's jump straight into the software and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I don't think anyone quite realizes how cool it feels to actually be back in Dual Monsters Genesis for I think the first time in maybe nine years, ten years, possibly even longer than that. Now, the problem with recording footage for this game is it's built in the Beyond engine. Beyond is a thousand years old. It, it's almost more than a thousand years old at this point. But it does kind of look like this. It's just a big window, there's not really any way to zoom in or out. So for most of this video, you will see a lot of pixelation and whatever. It, it is what it is. But this is Dual Monsters Genesis, possibly the precursor to a lot of the weird simulators that we have now. As back in the day, you were either playing on Dual Network or Dueling Network, or you were playing Dual Monsters Genesis. This thing is... So fucking cool. Not only did you have a completely open world to explore, mind you, it's based off of, I believe, Battle City? Like, you have the, uh, the river tunnels here where Yugi faced off against strings, I believe. You have the riverside, you can go all the way and all around. I, I just kind of want to explore the map for a little bit. I haven't seen this in so long. There used to be, if I remember right, the Kaiba, yeah, the Kaiba Corporation Towers here, which I believe you can still go inside of, right? Oh, you can't. Dang it. But this was the, the Kaiba Corp Tower, and then if we travel even further north, we got to, like, uh... Yeah, we got to Kaiba Land, which actually had, like, the old, uh... It has the actual, like, dual fields, which was awesome. I, I remember this area being used for, uh, certain events as well. It was, like, a, a travel-to area. I really enjoyed this thing. I remember up here, it's, like, a schoolyard or something. Yeah, oh no, it was the graveyard, not even a schoolyard, it was the graveyard. Which, if I remember right, if we go in here, and we just, like, go inside... Ah, oh, the building's currently closed. Damn, if you went inside here, you could actually go to the underground, and you could do stuff like, uh, shadow duels. It was, uh, interesting. Also, there's a rabbit for some reason. Ah, yeah, this is where the schoolyard was, right. So, a lot of people that wanted to play test decks back in the day that weren't that good, there was, like, this unwritten rule that if you were playtesting something that was clearly terrible, you take it to the schoolyard, because this was, like, it, it was just jank city. That's what it was. It was awesome. Then you had the game shop, where generally people would just, like, stand around and duel for the most part. You had the park, which is a park. And then you had the river, and then, yeah, I believe if we cross the bridge, we actually have... Oh, yeah, down here you have the, uh... Uh, what was this? This was where Yugi and Joey, like, uh, fought when Joey was mind-controlled, right? It's like the... Uh, it, yeah, whatever it was, the River City Duel thing. That's there, too. There's so many, like, cool locations you could just waltz around in back when, you know, this was 
a thing. Let's see if I remember where some of the, the other ones are, because I remember this was the town square. There's a, just a town square. It was nothing biggie, but people would stand around here with their custom avatars that they won through events and stuff. Uh, yeah, if you went through this, you got to the, the green fields. This was just like a super big, wide open space if you wanted to use it for anything you could. But yeah, generally, this was just, this was just awesome. Anyway, we have to we have to check out how the duels look. So when you clicked on yourself, you'd get this menu, which basically said you could open your profile, which just gives you a little box. You could edit this with your own custom picture and it show you all your decks and any of the sort of event uh, event things that you could get. You had DP, XP, GP, and SP, which were all relevant back in the day. They kind of were your status on the server, for better or for worse. You have the deck editor, which incredibly primitive, mind you, but it did do what it was supposed to. It didn't have to be something amazing. Funnily enough, it actually has been updated to include tier elements, which means the most recent set printed is available in this software that I don't think a single person still uses that was created like 13 years ago. I will give props to whoever is responsible for this these days, because I'll be, I'll be frank, I don't actually know who it is. So, I'm just gonna throw together a deck really quickly to show you some of the coolest things that this simulator did back in the day. Let's see if I remember how to build a Blue Eyes deck, first of all. So, like, I'm gonna be honest, I sat down for, I don't know, maybe five minutes or so and just threw together a fucking... a Chaos Max Dragon list off of the top of my head, and to be honest, this deck builder still kind of lives up. Like, this- this still works. Amazingly enough, you get yourself a, uh, a trunk here where you can actually change the format of a deck to TCG, OCG, or Rush, which is interesting. You can also go ahead and take deck notes in case you wanted to save some information about your deck. You could get a list of your deck, which actually phases out an entire list of the cards in it for you if you wanted to copy it somewhere. In addition, you can actually drop the deck on the ground for other players to pick up if you simply wanted to create a copy and give it to someone. It's actually intuitive. You could also just send it to someone if you had really wanted to. Anyway, enough stalling with this. I have to show you what this looks like. Oh boy. Yeah, now we're freaking talking. So back in the day, this is of course a manual simulator, but it does have some automation features that back in the day, uh, Dueling Network, which is now Dueling Book, didn't have, and still does not have to this day, 15 years later. Simply put, this is your dual UI. You have your dual disc down here, which, by the way, is interactive. You will be using this a lot. Back in the day, of course, the screen used to be smaller, so they'd be way more compressed than blowing it up huge like this, so it made more sense to have it there, but don't you worry. Down on the right side, you have your phases, which actually changes in the chat box, so you can keep track of what you're doing. For example, you can now see that you've entered the draw phase. Clicking here, you draw all of your cards. Again, back in the day, these cards did not used to be as small as they are, simply because, you know, the screens were smaller. You also have in options, I believe you can, in fact, turn up the zoom level, which, yes, in fact, you can. I'm going to turn it up like this, just to let you guys see it a little bit better. But, yeah, you can, you can adjust this sort of thing in the settings back in the day. Up here, you had the tag duel style, which you could tag duel up to six people, which was insanity. Uh, this needs an opponent, but this lets you request stuff, and this question mark button was uh, to summon help in case you needed it, because again, manual simulator. But regardless of that, we're not going to care. I'm going to show you exactly how cool this shit was back in the day. For example, the car- the, like, the hand that we do now was absolutely terrible, but we'd go into your main phase one, and we could hold and drag to summon stuff, and then- Yeah, it has the fucking effects too. Oh, uh, so in chat now it will say we special summon this, but we could drag this back to our hand, and you would see the card fly back into our hand. If you click on a card in your hand, you will get this uh, box here. You can view the card, normal summon, special summon, and a bunch of other things. We'll go for the normal summon first, just so you can see it. If you do it this way, it will ask you which monster zone to do it in. I'll do it in three. And you get the fucking effect for it. This is so fucking cool. Now, when it's summoned, of course, if it has an effect, you can click the effect button. 
which I think also has an effect, but it has not loaded in. I'm gonna try it again. There you go. It shines! You also get it in the chat box, of course, and if your opponent had a chain to this, I believe it's Control and X. It is! Oh god, you actually got to declare your chains by yourself, which is something that Dueling Book still doesn't let you do. They automated so many things here to allow you to kind of use it any way you wanted to. But at least we activated the effect of Manju. We are going to click on our deck and we are going to search deck. And then it will warn your opponent that you are in fact looking at your deck. Uh, for this, I suppose we will just search... Oh, I don't know. We'll go ahead and we'll search the correct card, the Advanced Ritual Art. We'll simply drag it to ourself, closing this. We'll make the deck be stopped looking at, and as you saw it there, it will automatically shuffle the deck when you leave it. But you can click it to shuffle it again, and you get the animation for it. We have to do. Doing that, let's just say we activate A. We'll activate it here. A Bingo Machine Go! Because Bingo Machine Go is funny. Then, of course, we get to search the deck again. We can click on any of the cards, and we can just... Uh, basically use it as however we want to. We're just going to do it the original way you used to do it back in Dueling Book and stuff was just you would send the cards to the graveyard, whatever you revealed. So we'll do that here too. We'll send Chaos Max, Chaos Max, and of course Chaos Max. Oh, we don't even have Chaos Maxes. Regardless, who the fuck cares? We'll just Chaos Max, Chaos Max, this idiot. There you go. Your opponent would, of course, just randomly pick one of them, because that is how the card worked. We'll take a Chaos Max, because that is the way we do things here. Then we just drag the other two back to the deck. We click on the deck and we shuffle it. And there you go. And then when a card was done, you could click on it and either send to the graveyard or destroy. If you click destroy, this happens. It blows up! <laughs> oh, I love these things. They're just so cool. Okay. We'll go ahead and we'll activate Advanced Ritual Art in any of the zones. I don't particularly care about it. In doing so, we will simply click on this button here. We will Special Summon in attack position in the main monster 4, let's say. Hear that? Yeah. For certain key cards, there were actually special music tracks and sort of like other generic cool stuff that the game would do. One of which, of course, is music tracks. So for Chaos Max Dragon specifically, it's the Chaos Max Dragon summoning theme from the anime. It's awesome. Of course, we have to, you know, send cost, I suppose. We'll do that. Just let's be proper, even though it's literally only us here. Let's be proper about it. We'll send for cost. There you go. Now, interestingly, this is not the only thing that was added to this, but in order to really show these things off, let's do some shenanigans. Of course, this is a manual simulator. We don't necessarily have to care about anything. Let's just summon a Sage with Eyes of Blue from our deck. It will also tell you that you special summoned it from the deck, which is nice. But here's the interesting thing about this simulator specifically. It was how you summoned from the extra deck because everything in your extra deck had animations tied to it. For example, if you did it on Dueling Book, you just send the card away and you did the thing, right? Clicking here, for example, to Link Summon, we could choose Special Summon. Then this happens. We then choose our target, which is Sage with Eyes of Blue, and cancel. It will show this. We will Link Summon with the following. It will be sent into the middle to create it, and boom. Linkerivo! And it has a sprite of its own! Some monsters, although there are very few of them, have their own thing. Also, the music is absolutely glaring in the background, but that is exactly how it should be. You also got the link zones pointed out to you to which ones are linked and co-linked as they change color to red should they happen. It's, it's just really cool. Let's summon back the eight Sage with Eyes of Blue here because we do have another summoning type to show off. We'll summon him back. Let's make a Synchro monster. So for Synchros, you would do the same thing. You select a tuner specifically, it will request that you do. And it will begin to glow. We then select a non-tuner monster, or more of them. 
And let's go ahead and synchro using these two. They disappear with another sound effect. We'll go for the main monster zone four. And there it is. Oh, I love that so much. It's so dumb, but it's so cool. Oh, okay. We need to we need to do a little bit more with this. Let's send these to the graveyard. If you just pull and drag them, you don't get the destroy effect, which is a little bit of a shame, but you know, who is to complain here? Let's show off the exceed summoning animation as well, because the exceed one I remember being probably the last one I saw. Also, Blue Eyes has its own sprite, as you can probably guess. It's a blue eyes. Now, unfortunately, we do get the Chaos Max music again, because I summoned Chaos Max again, whoop de doo But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make Hope Harbinger. So when doing this... You get the Exceed Rumble! We'll target the two materials. And we'll make number 38, Hope Harbinger! And for some of the monsters, you'll even get the number effect on your character, like 38, 39. They all appear on you. It's super fucking cool. Anyway, we now have a an exceed monster, which means we can actually click and drag on the materials to detach them. We don't have to think about it too much. We can just detach them like normal. And if it doesn't have material, it'll just show up like this. Anyway, let's send him to the graveyard. We don't necessarily care about it because we do have one final thing we need to show. And it is the fusion. Now, Pendulum, I believe, does have its own thing as well, but I didn't actually include any Pendulums here because I'm crazy, I suppose. Let's just summon three Blue Eyes. Now, I didn't include a way to actually do this, but keep in mind, Manual Simulator, we can do whatever we want. Let's just summon all three Blue Eyes. Blue Eye. And let's make Alternative Ultimate Dragon. Where's the, it also asks you where the fusion material is going, which is nice, because it knows there's a lot of cards that change it. But let's go ahead and mark everybody for fusion. Fusion! Ha! And you get the fusion effect that you've created, the ultimate dragon! Man, I remember this being so fucking cool back in the day to actually just drop a monster like this. The cool thing about it is as well, if you had selected on your character that you have an ace card, you would actually get like a special bit of music and stuff. I'm gonna see if I can find that setting because I really do not. It, it is somewhere. Oh, ace, there you go. So for example, let's say we have an ace card. You got to put up your own music track for your theme song. That shit's crazy. But let's just say there isn't one. But you did get to do that, which was awesome. So that's our ace card now. So if we now do this... Actually, we have to change one more setting, I remember. And that is the... The Moki Moki. Which is fixed text. So for example, let's do... We could do draw face for as an example. We could set it to... Or whatever. You know, role play. We'll do that. So now if we enter draw face... That's what's gonna end up in the chat box. It it's just cool shit like this. Oh damn it, I can't do it. Okay, so if I if I had set my custom music here, it would play the custom music I set for the card, which is just super cool. A couple of other noteworthy things that worked with this simulator specifically is that if you wanted to draw a card, you just clicked on your dual disc and it did it for you. You want to check the graveyard, or you could just click here. You wanna send a card from your hand to the graveyard, drag it to the dual disc graveyard, and you can actually see the card animation of the card slipping into the graveyard. That's so dope. If you wanted to do a bunch of other things, like example, change your life points, you simply clicked it. Let's say we took a hit to the face. The animation is there. It's so cool. Now, if a monster card were to attack another monster card, say our opponent had one, they will get two pop-ups. Unfortunately, I can't show this, but when you attacked an opponent's monster, it would say, does this battle go through? If you clicked yes, the following question would be, 
will you take X amount of damage? And then it would do the calculations based on the attack and tell you, hey, do you take this much damage? And then you click yes or no. If yes, it would do the math for you automatically. Last thing it asks is, is this monster destroyed? Yes or no. If it's yes, you see the destruction animation, which if you forgot, looks like this. And you would take the damage and then the combat would be over. If you click no at any point, you'd be able to activate any effects or do any other shenanigans that you'd really wanted to. But honestly, for a simulator created a long, long, long time ago, this could have absolutely done worse. I absolutely loved this thing back in the day. This was what I would like to call it at least, the coolest way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in a day where automatic simulators didn't really exist. During the time that this was at its best, at its most hype, I guess, Dueling Network was the most common place that you'd play Yu-Gi-Oh! This was back in the Synchro Sexel era sometime. Just around that corner, we also got the first iterations of EDO Pro. EDO Pro slowly but surely started taking players away from manual simulators because people just preferred to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in an automatic setting. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very, very complicated game, and having something do the rules for you generally meant you had to think less. Speed ahead even further than that, and in this modern day and age where EDO Pro is definitely something every duelist knows what it is, Yu-Gi-Oh! Mega has been out for almost a year and a half now and has blown everything else by, out by the water side, and Master Duel's been officially released as THE way to play Yu-Gi-Oh!, Duel Monsters Genesis simply doesn't have an audience anymore. Which, to me, is an absolute disgrace. There is so much charm in this simulator, no matter how primitive it may be, so if there is a way for me to bring this back somehow, I would love to. If the developers are out there, consider this my cry for your help. If there is something I can do to get my hands on, like, the host files or maybe, maybe even the dev files so I can make edits on my own, I would love to. I would love to bring a community onto this weird, wacky simulator to do something funny. But that's something for another video. If you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane, do remember to click the subscribe button, leave a like for the algorithm, because honestly, this game deserves more attention, even though it is quite literally almost 13 years old. As always, remember to stay safe out there.